We will be reading from Shino Bhagavatam, Tantakamba, Chapter 49, Abhulas Mission, Text 90. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Yatha Tvacharan Dhoke. Yavito Yas. Yaste Tamaham, Tasmat Samapi, but Tasman Pandas Pestat Matisuta, Anyatat Fatsham, Yari <laughs> Yes, 
There once was a pigeon who lived in the forest along with his wife. He had built a nest within a tree and lived there for several, several years in a convent. The two pigeons were very much devoted to their household duties. Usually if you see pigeons, they're always with two. See one with another. The two pigeons were very much devoted to their household duties. Their hearts being tied together by sentimental affection. They were each attracted by others' glances, both their features and states of mind. Thus they completely bond each other in affection. Naively trusting in the future, they carried out their acts of resting, sitting, walking, standing, conversing, playing, eating, and support as a loving couple among the trees of the forest. It looks like a love story. But, uh, whenever she desired anything for King, the sheep pigeon would flutteringly, flutteringly cajole her husband and he in turn would gratify her by faithfully doing whatever she wanted, even with great personal difficulty. Thus, he could not control his senses in her association. Then the female pigeon experienced her first pregnancy. When the time arrived, the chaste lady did deliver a number of eggs within the nest in the presence of her husband. When the time was ripe, baby pigeons with tender limbs and feathers created by the inconceivable potency of the Lord were born from those eggs. The two pigeons became most affectionate to their children and took great pleasure in listening to their awkward chirping, with which sounded very sweet to their parents. Thus with love, they began to raise the little birds who were born of them. The parent birds became very joyful by observing the soft wings of their children, their chirping, their lovely, innocent movements around the nest and their attempts to jump up and fly. Seeing their children happy, the parents were also happy. So forth, far all good. Their hearts bound to each other by affection, the foolish birds, completely bewildered by the fiduciary energy of the Lord, continue to take care of the young offspring who had been born to them. One day, the two heads of the family went out to find food for the children. Being very anxious to feed their offspring properly, they wandered all over the forest for a long time. At a certain time, a hunter who happened to be wandering through the forest saw the young pigeons moving about near their nest. Spreading out his net, he captured them all. The pigeon and his wife were always anxious for the maintenance of their children, and they were wandering in the forest for that purpose. Having obtained proper food, they now returned to their nest. When the lady pigeon caught sight of her own children trapped within the hunter's snatch, she was overwhelmed with anguish and cried out. She rushed, rushed toward them as they cried out to her in her turn. The lady pigeon had always allowed herself to be bound by the hopes of intense material affection, and thus her mind was overwhelmed by anguish. Being in the grip of the illusory energy of the law, she completely forgot herself and rushing forward to, the, to her helpless children, she was merely bound in the hunter's neck. Seeing his own children, who were more dear to him than life itself, partly bound in the hunter's net, along with his dear most wife, whom he considered equal in every way to himself, the poor male pigeon began to lament, me. Now we will hear his words. And that is an, an, a symptom 
Tad van, es tev to tiks sakīt, tad tāds man. Tā maņķis, ka viņi mēt. Un viņi vēl mīt, ja vēl tu mēt nav, mēt nes nav. Tad nu mēl pičiņu sēt. Alās, čerti, how I know this point. He thinks really complete convinced is the body and his relation with this sheep pigeon is everything. I'm obviously a great fool who I did not properly execute by his activities. I could not satisfy myself, nor could I fulfill the purpose of life. The purpose of life was his family. My dear family, which was the basic basis of my religiosity, economic development, and sense gratification, is now hopelessly a moment that uh, says, my wife and I were an ideal match. She was always faith faithfully obeyed me, and in fact accepted me as a worshipful deity. But now seeing her children lost, and a home empty, she has left me behind and gone to heaven with our stately children. Now I'm a rich person living in an empty home. My wife is dead, my children are dead. Why should I possibly want to live? My heart is so pained by separation from my family that life itself has become simply suffering. So that is what uh, Akua says to Titaras, that is what is waiting me, that suffering of separation of your son. That, uh, then, after the father pigeon wretchedly stared at his poor children, trapped in a net, and on the verge of death, pathetically struggling to free in themselves, his mind went blank and does he himself fall into the hunter's net. The cruel hunter, having fulfilled his desire by capturing the head pigeon, his wife and all their children set off for his home. That, uh, some of the commentaries on that. So, the symptom of excessive attachment was that the male and female pigeons were so attracted to each other that they could not tolerate even a moment's separation from one another. The gopis, they could not tolerate a moment's separation from Krishna. That says, spiritual attachment, does the excessive attachment we need, but that is very dangerous. No. So, in the purpose, it's explained, the living entity has an eternal love for the Lord, but when perverted, that love is manifested as false material affection. A pale reflection of a false life based on forgetful forgetfulness of Krishna. So we have seen this an example, these two pigeons of um, excessive attachment leading to great suffering and that ex excessive attachment causes the mind to go mad and the intelligence becomes completely deranged. And we see that same, that same thing happening to Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj, he gave up his kingdom to meditate on the absolute truth, to get self-realization in the forest. He gave everything up. He, he went to the forest. In the forest, he was doing his sadhana. 
and it came to a high level of spiritualization bound. Still, he developed an excessive attachment. He became again attached to the uh, and the symptom was his mind went mad, his intelligence deranged. That, uh, so this is an expression of Bharatma as attachment to the deer. He says, I do not know, but the deer might have, might have been eaten by a wolf or a dog or by the bulls that flock together or the tiger who travels alone. Alas, when the sun rises, all auspicious things begin. Unfortunately, they have not begun for me. The sun is the Vedas personified, but I'm bereft of all Vedic principles. The sun god is now setting. Yet the poor animal who trusted in me since its mother died has not returned. The, 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 the deer is exactly like a prince. So this is imagination style. When will it return? When will it again display its personal activities which are so pleasing? So the mind wanders on these things, comes in a, in a circle due to the Tata attachment and misused the intelligence to justify what you are doing. To justify the attachment. When will it again pacify a wounded heart like mine? I certainly must have no pious assets, otherwise the, the deer would have been returned by now. Alas, the small deer, while playing with me and seeing me feigning meditation with closed eyes, would circumambulate me due to anger arising from love, and it would fearfully touch me with the points of his soft horns, which felt like drops of water. When I placed all the sacrificial ingredients on the kushagas, the deer when playing would touch the grass with its teeth and thus pollute it. When I chastised, the deer, by pushing it away, it would immediately become fearful and sit down motionless, exactly like the son of the saintly person. Thus, it would stop its play. So here we have very clearly, he's doing his, sacrif his sacrifices. That was, that was part of his sadhana, his meditation and his sacrifices. And he still did externally sadhana, but internally he was thinking of the deer, not of Krishna. So he was neglecting his sadhana. All, all the attention went to the deer. So that is one, an important explanation why this excessive attachment takes place. This ex excessive attachment takes place if we, we neglect our sadhana, spiritual practice, and he did it, he, he neglected his sadhana purposefully. That's the problem. That was the problem. Yeah, that we borrowed one. Why he became attached to the deer? He was a child. Child. Atria, that one who protects someone else against hurt, that uh, does Chatriya, protecting others. If a Chatriya, if someone surrenders to him, he needs to protect the other. Kali surrendered to Krishna, to, to Maharaj Pariksit, and Maharaj Pariksit could not kill him, he had to protect him. But, so that's the Chatriya nature. But the Chatriya nature is the only concept of life. 
although it was greatly purified, it was back to young Baba, still doesn't shut here. Nature came about again. He saw that helpless deer that uh, and he was going to give it protection. But that's the, the, the next mistake he makes. What can you do for a deer? A deer you cannot elevate to spiritual consciousness. It's not possible. That, uh, and neglecting in spiritual practice was a great error. And therefore, that excessive attachment to cook. And he did externally some part of his sadhana. But internally, he was not there. Like when we chant Hare Krishna, where is our mind? That, uh, so that's important, devotional service. Service external, the devotion is internal. We must be with Krishna when we chant, with the holy name, and not listen to the mind and who brings up so many things. That, that is our challenge while practicing the ocean search. That uh, in the beginning, in the neophyte states, it's more external. The internal is not there. But when we make advancement, internal must come. And we see it was practically on Baba, which is the preliminary stage of the whole content. It was really nearly there. But he purpose, purpose, purposefully neglected his sadhana to give all attention to the air, which he could not elevate spiritually. That, uh, so the same with, uh, with these attachments in family life. That uh, you should not take these relationships external too serious. Internally, we do our duty. Externally, we do our duty, but internally, should be connected to your person. And that is a great a challenge that uh, so when we go back to this purport in a purport to where three points and we discussed the first one the problem for Titarajta of the excessive attachment to each because if you cultivate such excess, excessive attachment, then you cannot hear good advice. You may hear it, but that is what Tita Rastas will say later. Yes, this is good advice, and I recognize it, it's good advice. But I cannot follow it due to attachment to my sons. It's like a lightning coming to my heart. And it's going to going to it, coming in out. But I cannot follow it. Like Krishna says to Bhagavad Gita in 1863. I told you now everything, now do what you want to do. That so Krishna gives us always a choice that uh, do we want to follow or not want to follow. But if you have excessive attachment to something in this world, you may say, I follow, but you can't. It's blocking you. The mind your mind and intelligence is busy with other things than Krishna. So avoiding creating this excessive attachment. But then one can say, okay, but I have this excessive attachment. How to get rid of it? That 
pollution is starting now, and hearing, hearing objects. Both are wanted us to hear every morning and every evening. That will prevent you to get the success of attachment. Because you hear about the futility of, of, of not your life. Not your life is all for nothing. It ends with the body. All relationships, all things in this world, it's going to end soon. Soon it comes soon. That uh, not so finally, that uh, time is flying. Yeah. So therefore, one can have clear practical intelligence when the mind and heart is pure. So if we pure the mind, we, we, we purify the mind by hearing every day and the intelligence, then we will become more the observer and, and very careful to avoid uh, excessive attachment, any attachment. The, the, the sense and the sense objects are always attracted to each other. I was, when I was traveling with well, Anonymous, we went to many airports together. And in the airport, yes, you see so many things. But I was with Marat and I would, we would go to the gate for boarding. I would sit down took his computer or his iPod and he was reading. He didn't see anything until the boarding time. That, uh, so keep your senses busy with Krishna always. That's important. And then on the airplane, he would, he would put up his earphones and ear bubble part. <laughs> that uh, always be con this means we have to learn the art to protect our consciousness against this contamination. That but this clear practical intelligence comes when we come to the model goodness. In the model goodness, we see things as they are. The torch of the Mohammedan a third is sit face at the paper shirt in the But though just the mobile camera was there, see, sit there, they are now in one, sit face at the paper shirt. By hearing daily the class on the Bible tongues, the heart becomes nearly clean and all the, all the passion and ignorance are going to be removed. And then one comes to the point that one can see things as they are. But, um, and, but if we are too strong under the control of passion and ignorance, then that good advice, we can even intellectually understand it yes, as good advice. Then the next moment, the mind goes back to the attachment. And it's very strong that, uh, therefore, this purification is a gradual process. If we come to the model of goodness, you become the observer of the mind. And with the transcendental knowledge we get from Krishna, from Bhagavata, from Bhagavad Gita, we become the observer. And with that intelligence, we look, is that good for my Krishna consciousness? Is that not good for my Krishna consciousness? Will the Prabhupada be pleased if I do that for the spiritual master? That's the first concern. It's a very simple thing. That seeing to the scriptures, the first section, seeing to the Vagatam, that, uh, and that is spiritual, practical intelligence that uh, 
So there is no lack of good advice. Every morning, every evening, we are supposed to hear by the tongue, by the three tongue, we get good advice. And we think about how to how to practice this not much. That, uh, so that is this accessible attachment is a close of town for. And we should guard again our souls against it. That uh, remember this example of the speeches. Remember the example of, of Bhagavad knowledge who was you know, it's very rare someone comes down from that level, but it's a warning. Even if you become advanced, don't create his attachment. And we won't create it if we keep strict to our stamina. Um, that uh, in the morning we chant our rounds. First, the morning program. This morning program is our protection. That uh, all these instructions of Krishna, these are the real religious principles. Vishma Dev said to, 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 said to Yudhisthira Maharaj when he was on the bed of Marus, he said to Yudhisthira Maharaj, this, when, as long as you follow, follow the instructions of the Brahmins and the religious principles, you will be protected by the same principles. If we just follow Prabhupada's instructions of our daily sadhana, we follow that, we will be protected by it. That, uh, but we should never deviate. I've heard from the devotees when they stop chanting for us, for us for some time, it's difficult to come again to the sun. It's just difficult. That um, we'll never do it. Always we study in our sadhana and we will be protected against this excessive attachment. And that, uh, yeah, and an interesting point is, and that's a little tricky, because later, in, in one of the verses later, we will hear Titarastra saying to Akrim that, uh, yes, I cannot follow this advice. It's going to my heart. Put your attachment of my sons. But yes, it's the will of providence, you will say. It's Krishna's plan. So it's part of Krishna's plan. That's another level of the story. It's part of Krishna's plan because this war has to take place. That's Krishna's arrangement to take away the burden of this world and Pita was his stubbornness was also an arrangement from Krishna. That we could learn that we could learn not to create such attachment. And most of us who are here with us today, they don't have this excessive attachment. And there may still be some attachment, yes. But don't create it again. But let's learn from it for the rest of our lifetime. Thank you very much. Any comments or questions? Yes. What's your name? For me, it's... <laughs> AC, what is the exact difference between being a heaven and an excessive attachment or concern for position well being and being as a remote being compassionate? What is the exact difference? Yeah, the, that's a good question. That, uh, what's the difference between excessive attachment and acting out of compassion? Mm -hmm. 
Then for that, we have to go back to the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Then the first verse, uh, Srila Prabhupada explains that the attachment, the attachment of Arjun that uh, was a child is attachment because he was concerned with the body, not with the soul. So that's the essence, compassion for the soul. That, uh, compassion for the body is external, the body has to die. That, uh, so we guess uh, Vishma Deva to die. So this compassion was, was a weakness of heart. He had to do his duty. His duty was to please Krishna. That, um, and that should always be there. That Krishna speaks about compassion in the Bhagavad Gita. He gives us instructions. It's basic instructions in Bhagavad Think of me, does it? And, uh, and become my devotee, worship me, give me respect. And then Sadam Vishyanam comes on, but not so far, you will see. Man, she said, such a. So, and then surrender to me, follow all my instructions and forget all the other things. But then these instructions continue. He says, the uh, Arjun. One who knows, one who knows, one who just hears this dialogue between you and me, is, uh, yeah, he becomes spiritually advanced just by hearing. And the best service you can do is to give this knowledge to my devotees, for those who are austere, to others who are receptive for it. So that's our compassion. That's the instruction. This is the end of the instructions. Summary that question. Because my devotees surrender to me and preach to those who are receptive, to the innocent. And that's our compassion. Of course, the Buddhists want to become even more compassion, and they, they preach even to the demons with great reactions. That's to be expected. So that's our compassion to give this yeah, knowledge. I am also asking this question because I never knew before. That, for example, if you go to, if you want to preach in Africa, then people are starving, you know, to do that first. And just like the first thing called friends, you can make it familiar, and then you can go say, ahead. So, first, you have to eat them, then you take care of them. Before they go to sister, you have to walk with them. So, exactly. That is what Krishna says. You have to pay preach to those who are here, who are non envious of me, who are receptive. If you are hungry, where is your receptivity? So first, Peter Prasad. So these are preaching techniques. We have to find out who is receptive. Prabhupada did the same thing. He went to, he went to America. Who were receptive? All the hippies were receptive. Dolce Tanya went to Varanasi. The first time, he didn't preach to anyone because they were criticizing him. The second time, they became more receptive and they invited him. The Maharashtra Brahman invited him on, on behalf of Pakistan, the Sarasvati, and all the Mahabali Sanyasis. And then he went to preach to them and he converted them all because they were, they were becoming receptive before they were criticizing him. So we have to see who is receptive and preach to them. 
that so means compassion must be applied according to Krishna's instructions. And that's very important. Not to our own invention and try to be compassionate. That um, what can we do? That we must be empowered by Krishna. And if we follow his instructions and organize our preaching according to these instructions, then we may be successful. That um, I'm very much, to, to a certain point, I'm, I'm involved in it because in the Minister for Sanyas, we are training Sanyas candidates how to preach. That, and then this, this is one of the things that is explained. That, but this is preaching to those outside who are receptive. <laughs> to bring them to our programs. So we have to turn them then from members outside to members who come regularly to our programs, congregational members. But then from congregational members, we must bring them to the to the level of committed that they take initiation and so on. And from committed, we have to bring them to core. To a core means those who are pushing forward the mission. So the, the preaching, the compassion is not just for the people outside, but also for us. That I see many times, many places, uh, congregational members on Sunday feast, and so many from many Indians sometimes, but they are not committed. They are not committed. How do we make them committed? So that's also part of our mission. That is Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada uh, said we should boil the milk. That uh, makes sure that everyone who comes to our temples can be become devotees. Yes. Hmm? Boil the milk. Yeah, to so, um, so help the devotees to advance to a higher level so that they take initiation. Yeah. I mean, much more to say about it. Anything else? Yes. And yeah. Yeah, and we were actually familiar with the need to explain that the situation that we are in. That is very involved in the not direction, but in the age to understand. We should be given the because even when they know, they can be completely like understanding of things, you know, it has to be done in the right way. And it's quite important. And about the yeah, school, the student here, when there's many, many people come. And I think they, they take it like oh, which is the relation. If they don't give even a donation for the child, they don't try to help them. You know? And we should actually like tell them that it's important for them to do a little bit, which is by doing a little bit, it will help us and all the humans as well. Maybe it's just how we're yeah. it's, well, it, it's a slow process. Ah, it's slow process. But first, we have to become friends. The devotional service, Philip Prabhupada said, is voluntary. Voluntary. So we make them friends, we make them good feeling, a good experience being in the others. That and, and that's very important because they will tell that good experience to others. They may not be inclined to spread the light, but they tell it to others, and that's our publicity and more people come. That and that and and then when they come, yeah, it's up to them that it's voluntary. It works on inspiration. We have to give them the inspiration. It's a great challenge. And that we can reach them at the back of the territories. 
Mm -hmm. If involved in the movie, you say just be part of what we do with the community and then you can be involved and you join us in the movie. Yeah. That's the next step, engaging them in, in devotion service. But that must come through inspiration from them. Yeah, we give the example. The greatest preachers were the gopis. Buddha went to Vrindavan. And what are the gopis doing? They are doing their household shows. They are churning butter. That uh, just doing their activities, but by their devotion, they were the greatest preachers. That uh, we just have to be ourselves and be kind with the people. We will come. Thank you very much. Shantara Shima Parotam Ki, Ilapo Pat Ki, Shantara.